There are times when we pray about what requires for us to take responsibility. There are things unlocked by prayer, Rumbi, but there are things unlocked by responsibility. You can never pray away your responsibilities. Oh, God, help us. <laughs> you cannot substitute responsibilities with prayer. For the most part, Africans were guilty of praying about what it requires for us to take responsibility. Heaven needs a response from you. The Lord sent Jesus, and I'll come back to that, but just flow with me. The Lord sent Jesus on planet Earth to rescue men, and he came to redeem men. He came to... Um, Apet Lutfosius, buy us back. He came to pay the price of redemption so that man can be reconciled to God. And it took him 30 years to prepare for a three-year assignment. And in the three-year assignment, hear this, Jesus came to introduce the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Can you imagine? I had never seen it like that. But the Lord opened my eyes. He says Jesus was a forerunner for the Holy Spirit. Just like John was a forerunner for Jesus, Jesus was a forerunner for the Holy Spirit. Jesus died, went to heaven. I must decrease so that the Holy Spirit can increase. There is little emphasis on our greatest advantage. John 16 verse 7. The Holy Spirit. It says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Who wants greatness? Maybe let's start there. Who believes that they are destined for greatness? If you want greatness, I introduce to you the Holy Ghost. He says, this is Jesus speaking. It should be read bleeding in your Bible. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. I must decrease. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. I'm not going to hog the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get out of the way. He says, it is to your it is to you. In other words, what I'm about to introduce to you is an advantage to you. Did Jesus The advantage, he will not come. The helper, Aros Paraclites, means another of the same kind. It means what I, Jesus, could do only in Jerusalem. He can be doing in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, South Africa, but at the same time. The Holy Ghost is better than Jesus. Yeah, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, uh, they don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> no, no, Jesus said it. He says, I want to introduce to you an advantage. It is to your advantage that I go. Ah, Master. We thought you'd stay here and build a kingdom. No. It's to your advantage that I go. Because only when I have gone will the real advantage come. Jesus says, I can help you, but there is a one whose assignment is helper. So unless I go, he can't come. But if I depart, I will send him. I will send him because he's better at continuing what I did in three years for the rest of eternity. I did something for three years, but uh, there's someone who is better. And he must come. He must come. And when he comes, he will guide you. He will do what I cannot do. 
He will guide you. If he comes, he will guide you. Which means you need guidance. And John says in 1 John 20, verse 20 and 27, 1 John 2, 20 to 27, yes, that's it. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, not from Jesus, from the Holy One. And you know all things. I taught you some things. But when he comes, he will teach you all things. Not just all spiritual things. All things. He will teach you how to wife that husband. He will teach you how to husband that wife. He will teach you how to do business. The Holy Spirit is the limit breaker. He is the limitless dimension of God. He is an embodiment of the presence of God. When we say God is here, we're not talking about the Father. We're not talking about Jesus. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things. Life is a journey of learning. And the more you walk with the Holy Spirit, the more you learn. Say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Now, now, he will not teach you unless you ask him to teach you. Asking to be taught is proof of humility. He says, and you will know all things. Verse 27. He says, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. So, Jesus could not abide with them. But that anointing is an abiding anointing. Not a visiting anointing. Thank God for divine visitation. But thank him much more for divine habitation. Uh, in other words, John here, the revelator, is telling us that, that you can ab he can abide with you. He can walk with you. He can go to work with you. Uh, he can do marriage with you. He can do all activities of life with you. When you're in the choir and you're without the Holy Spirit, you are just singing. But with the Holy Ghost, you are ministering. He abides in you. And you do not need, need any university to teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. I know you sell cars, but he can teach you how to sell them. Whatever you are doing, the Holy Ghost is the custodian of wisdom. The intelligentsia of God supernatural wisdom from on high witty inventions thy kingdom come ideas on earth as it is in heaven he can begin to download onto you and teach you things that men do not know that's why they said of jesus where did he get these things from he didn't get them from bible school the Sadducees and the Pharisees had been to Bible school. They had not heard the things that he said. So they had to ask, from whence does this man get these things? When the Holy Ghost is with you, you become a living wonder. You become a marvel. People will look at you and marvel. People will listen while you say things that are too wonderful for yourself. You begin to speak because you have the tongue of the learned. You begin to speak better than graduates from Harvard. He is the Holy Spirit. I'm nothing without the Holy Spirit. Nothing, nothing. Just a man with a microphone. Without the Holy Spirit. But when I'm with him, I'm a healer. When I'm with him, I'm a deliverer. When I'm with him, miracles happen. Signs and wonders happen. People are healed from around the world. Tumors disappear while I'm teaching. His power is present. While I'm I don't have to be doing deliverance for people to be delivered. While I'm talking about him, he comes. He comes. He's invested in an environment where he's spoken about. Even when you speak the word of God, the spirit comes. His spirit came unto me, is equal to two. As he spake unto me. Say, Holy Spirit, I value you. Throughout the Old Testament, we see men and women who did great things for God. And they only did them because he was with them. Uh, let me give that to you again.
I, thou art a man sent from God. Huh? You are a man who came from God. For no man can do these things, results. Except God is with him. And Mwarane system may go to Anokutuma, but when the name God sends you, then goodness and mercy follows you. He doesn't send you and then and say, Give me feedback. He sends you, but he goes with you. Wow. What a God. He doesn't just assign, he goes with the assignment. In other words, he wants to make sure the assignment is done well. So he still goes with you. Say, Holy Spirit, go with me. Holy Spirit, flow with me. Wherever I go, whatever I do, oh, Holy Spirit, do it with me. I don't want to do it alone. Never do any transaction without the Holy Spirit. If you do a transaction without the Holy Spirit, it will not be done to completion. Don't just celebrate the breakthrough. Celebrate the assignment. <laughs> get the breakthrough within the assignment. Let me not get ahead of myself. Say partnership. Say partnership. Whenever you do a partnership, let's say business, why do you need a business partner? I'm looking for partnership. I'm looking for an investor. I have this idea. And I'm looking for an investor. Why do you look for an investor? Because the investor has what you don't have. Huh? A partnership is supposed to breed advantage. Hmm? So you look for someone who has what you don't have. That's why all this fighting in marriage doesn't make sense. Because you marry someone who has what you don't have. So why should you fight with them about them not being like you? If you want someone like you, marry you. Two very different people are supposed to get married. But isn't it amazing that you get married to someone different from you, you start fighting them about the difference. I can't bear children. No matter how fine I am. I do not have I'm faithful and wonderfully made. I don't know about you. <laughs> Especially after the fast. <laughs> Hello? I can't bear children with all this fineness. With all these biceps, triceps, all other seps. I could never do what she so I look for someone who can do what I cannot do. And I hook up with them because it's to my advantage. The kids will not be there without her. That's why all this lesbianism doesn't make sense. Adam and Aaron try and have a child. You're going to need a womb. And Eve is going to be looked for somewhere there. Say partnership. Watch this. In a partnership, I bring what I have. A partner brings what they have. And together, we achieve more. Am I right? Now, God needs men. God cannot achieve things on earth independent of men. He can't. He's God, but he can't. That is a limitation in God. That's why they said, what is man? That you are so mindful of him. The son of man that you visit him. What, why are you obsessing about this man? There's, no, there's none of this obsession about us as angels. And you have made him a little lower. 
Not than angels. That, that than angels was, was a, mis, a mistranslation. The original translation is, you have made him a little lower than Elohim. Not than angels. We are higher than angels. Angels are not gods. We are gods. Children of the most high God. Angels are workers. My child will always be greater than my worker. Angels are workers. They are sent on assignments by God. Divine assignments by God. We are God's children. So God in wanting to reproduce himself made man. Okay? Now, man sinned fell. I'm just giving you the pretext, pretext context of the text. Man, si man sinned. Man fell. Adam thrown out of the garden. This one. Jesus, God now has an idea. Let me redeem man. But I need to redeem men by sending a man. But I can't send the man to redeem men who is weak like the man. So I need to send a man who has an original God content. Hello? I need to send him. I already have a name for him. Right? Hail Mary. Look one. You've been highly favored of the Lord. Follow me. Follow me, follow me. Rejoice, Mary. Right? The Lord is with you. Say, the Lord is with you. Okay? I'm going to need you to think a little bit in this first part of the service. This will, it will help you. Right? The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Next verse. But when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and considering what manner of greeting this was. Verse 30. And behold, you will receive in your womb and bring forth a son. Right? I have a name for him already. Names are not given to children after they are born. You don't wait for your mother to tell you your child's name. <laughs> Get a name from up there. Okay. His name is Jesus. Right? You shall call his name Jesus. So what did God want? He wanted the son born. The son's name was who? Jesus. What was Jesus' assignment? To seek and save the lost. So the assignment came because men were lost. It means God wanted something done on earth. If God could do Jesus by himself, why did he talk to Mary? He talked to Mary because he couldn't do it by himself. Okay? So, he needed to partner with man to redeem man. Are we on the same page? Say partnership. Now, God values partnership. God sees the need for partnership. Right? Next verse. Quickly. Building a foundation. He will be great. That's what you should call your child even before he's born. He will be called the son of of the highest. Now automatically God was now removing Joseph from the equation. Not the son of Joseph. Jesus is not the son of Joseph. Joseph was a caretaker father. Son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Right? Quickly. Next verse. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Oh, are, are you learning? I'm teaching two things in one. Before you bear your child, you need to declare his, of his kingdom, shall, there shall be no end. He shall be a son of the most high. He shall be a son of God. He will remain in the house of God. He will serve God. He will have kingdom agenda. Next verse. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this thing be? Since I do not know a man. How can I start this business? Since I don't have capital. How can I get married? I'm already past expected marriage age. In other words, in the natural, this is impossible. Because you, you, you already excused Joseph from the equation. How can this thing be? How can this business be in this economy of Zimbabwe? Since I do not know a man. Since I have this limitation. Since you said it would be done without this and that. How shall this thing be? Alright? Remember it was a divine assignment. Say divine assignment. 
Next verse quickly. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Divine assignment. The Holy Spirit must come upon you. Don't attempt to do holy assignments without the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you continue to say, how shall this thing be? This thing shall not be unless the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, okay. The power of the highest will overshadow you. So, he's telling us that Mary, to achieve the divine assignment, here's the sermon, there will be a divine partnership with you and the Holy Spirit. He will come upon you. He will overshadow you. In other words, in this whole assignment, there will be very little of you. And there will be more of him. I wonder in your business, is there more of your ideas or his ideas? Is there more of your strength or more of his strength? Is there more of your connections than his connections? Who is there more of in this assignment you are doing? So the Holy Spirit, watch this, will come upon you. In other words, you have to receive the Holy Spirit first. He will come upon you. He will overshadow you. Who will overshadow you? The power of the Most High. Why? It's an assignment from the Most High. Are you catching this? Lift up your right hand. Say, Holy Spirit, come upon me for a divine assignment. Holy Spirit, there are things you want to do through me on earth. I can't do them by myself. So Holy Spirit, I need you to come upon me so I can birth the impossible. God's agenda is always impossible. Until the Holy Spirit comes. Million dollars in Zimbabwe? Without corruption, impossible. Until he comes. It's all impossible until he comes. It's all what? Until he comes. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to come. And do the impossible through me. Do the impossible through me. Now, watch this. Who approached who on this assignment? Huh? God. By the time we're around about verse number 20 or somewhere there in the same chapter, Mary did not know that there was a Jesus to be born. Am I right? She didn't even know. Mary was not planning to have a baby. This one. But God was planning to have a baby. So when God has a plan, huh, he will approach you. If Mary decided to name Jesus Denford, because Denford, I don't know what Den. That would have been the end of the assignment. Don't give God's assignment your name. Who wanted a baby? God. Who didn't know that a baby was wanted? Mary. Huh? So, God wanting a baby approached a woman with abilities God did not have. God did not have a womb. So you found a woman with a womb. Say availability. You found a pure woman. To partner with God, purity is key. So all this holiness, holiness, be holy, be righteous, walk right, is because God has an assignment. That he needs holiness. Could it be that God is withholding a Jesus assignment 
because you have not yet cleaned up. If you clean up virgin, God will show up. There are things God wants to birth through you, but he can't do them while you're still drinking. Because the assignment will be tainted by alcohol. Don't, 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 don't say Jesus turned water into wine. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Are you praying for a holy assignment without holiness? Remember, it is the Holy Spirit who wants to come. <laughs> say, Holy Spirit. You have an assignment. So I'll clean up. Watch this. The co conversation continued. Nizu, right? Mary agreed. Nizu, say submission. She didn't say, let me think about it. When God approaches, don't take time to think about it. Now, Mary didn't consult her mother. It's not that she didn't have a mother. Who is your mother when it comes to divine assignments? Jesus taught us that your biological mother is irrelevant when it comes to kingdom assignment. It's in your Bible. He said, who is my mother? We're talking kingdom business. Who is my mother? In other words, in fact, at one moment he called a woman. You're my mother, but you're just still a woman. A woman who was used, whose womb was used by God. Don't hang it over my head. Many in Africa, many divine assignments have been thwart and aborted because of mother. Mother. Mayo. Mama. Mom. Mom. Mommy. Mary was available. Mary was submitted. Mary was humble, willing vessel. This way, right? She had time for the kingdom assignment. She didn't say these nine months. I'm not doing one another. I'm not one Ask your neighbor: Are you available? Are you submitted? Are you humble? Are you willing? Do you have time for kingdom assignment? Can God interrupt you, Mary? Mary had plans to get married. Jesus was going to be an inconvenience. Jesus was going to be a baby that needed explanation. In those days, you were stoned for having a child out of wedlock. In other words, Jesus was like a death sentence to Mary. Are you willing to die for the cause? Jesus was a risk. Are you willing to risk for his work? Have you ever taken a kingdom risk? It is a risk to buy brand new chairs and hope people come and sit on them. These are not sofas at my house. Yieldedness. I'm talking about your part. Yielded. Mary was yielded. Be it unto me. That's yieldedness. She didn't send this She said, be it unto me. Now, remember, it's a be it unto me, not be it unto us. Yeah, too much my people, my people. You want to do things with relatives. Mary did not say, be it unto my clan. Be it unto me. Mary was not even with Joseph. Not beat unto us as a couple. Beat unto me. There are things God wants to do through you. Thank God for the fact that you're a couple, but there are things God wants to do through you. Melissa and Kuda are married, but when Melissa gets the microphone to preach here, Kuda is not in the equation, except maybe by my acknowledgments. I thank my husband for supporting me while I was preparing. Anyway, Mark chapter number one. Be it unto me. 
Yieldedness. Say yieldedness. What is to be yielded? To flow with God. To flow with God. Now God can't flow with you. Everything God says, you want to bring out your philosophy. All God needed from Mary was her agreement, not her opinion. Are you too opinionated for divine assignments? Does your opinion override the will of God? Say surrender. That's the next condition. She was surrendered. You remember there's a God assignment. Remember she was not even planning to have a baby. So you need to surrender. Total surrender to his will. Say total surrender. Look at me. There were things Mary wanted to do. She could have been planning to have a garden, you know, do, raise flowers, have a crop. <laughs> Hello? Go for a holiday. Go on the beach. Have a gap year, whatever. God says, hell Mary. <laughs> Look at what God calls favor, inconvenience. Highly favored, you are giving me a baby. I have to explain. Come on, come on, come on, Mary. Really, Mary, what happened? Joseph says, I don't know what Mary is talking about. Please talk to Mary. Mary says, The Holy Spirit did it. Like, really, Mary. Mary, when you explain to people what God is doing through you, it will look like it will look like you it will look like you're saying to people you have no idea. <laughs> it's just by the way. Total surrender. Sacrifice of self and resources. Now I need diapers. <laughs> now I need diapers. For a baby, I was not planning. Now I need to, I stay in Mandara, I now need to go to Avondale to pick up someone for church. Because the divine assignment inconvenience. Now I need to add an extra 20% fuel. Because of something God said I must do. Are you willing to spend for God? Or as Alignment. If God is going to need to use you, you're going to need to be aligned. God wants to use you, but not the way you are. Julie, this means that during the pregnancy of Mary, Joseph must stay in the next bedroom. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> Don't touch Mary. God is at work. Season of holiness. Because God is doing something new. And we don't want to assume that Joseph might be in there somewhere. I don't know if you are ready for this level of teaching. Don't taint what God is doing. Let it remain a holy thing. Say alignment. And the next is obedience. Be it unto me. 
Be it what? According to? According to your word. Maybe Mary's mother had other plans. Not be it unto me according to what my mother said. Be it unto me according to what you said. Keep it according to what he said. Say divine partnership. Alright. The next is prayer. Mary needed to be prayerful. Do you keep praying about the divine assignment? I sought for a man. Imagine a whole God. I sought for a man to stand in the gap. That I would birth through some, something through them that would deliver mankind. I sought for a man. Say Lord I'm here. Be a usable vessel. <clears throat> Say Lord. Are you still here? Or you might have to wake up some of your neighbors. Tap them by the shoulder. Say, are you still here? Okay, now look at me. Say, Lord, you want to do new things, great things in my environment, in my nation, even in my world. I am here. I'm available. I'm available. I'm submitted. I'm humble, willing. I have time. I'm sold out. I'm yielded. I surrender totally. I will sacrifice my body to birth your next move. I will sacrifice my resources to birth the next move of God. I'm in alignment. I'm obedient. I will pray about the assignment and I'll be a vessel that you can use. Hallelujah. So this is what you bring to the table. There are things God brings to the table in a partnership. Mary says, how can this thing be? In other words, I'm not able to pull this off. Somebody say, I can't pull it off without God. Okay. God will bring rescue. He will first rescue you from your family for this to work. He will restore whatever it is that you don't have. He will restore. God will bring speed. Things will happen quickly. It didn't take another nine months. No, 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 no. It happened quickly. Say speed. God will bring strength. He will give you strength for what he wants to partner with you. God will give you skills. God will tell you to do a business that you have no skills So that you can ask, how shall this thing be? So that the Holy Spirit can come upon you. So that you don't take the credit. He brings his skills. So you can't say it's because I went to such and such a school. No. He will bring his skills. Divine skills. You need to write divine skills. He will bring his glory. Say his glory. He will bring his glory. He will bring his promotion. You will be promoted in society. When you take a divine assignment. God will bring divine establishment. Say establishment. Okay. Remember our example of a business partner. So now you begin to benefit from relationships they've already established over the years. Now imagine partnering with God. How many relationships has he already developed over the years? You're looking for customers? He says, the hearts of kings, they're in my hand. That's why in Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 5, after you arise, shine, glory comes upon you. What happens? Kings will come. Not only kings, men, Gentiles. Do you know unbelievers belong to God? God can make unbelievers to look for you. And you are precious in my sight, I think Isaiah 43. I will give men for your life. I will give men for your vision. I will give men for your assignment. The assignment is bigger than you. So you need other men. And God has the men. Oh, I want to start a business. Construction business. I don't believe that one buried. Huh? Except maybe Wilfred. Next door but one. Mugoma Wiri. 
And the weary are the kind of work as the Bazaka bid. And God comes down in His Majesty and says, I want to build stadiums with you. About those are weary. And you know you can't do stadium now, weary. You know you can't bear Jesus without the Holy Ghost. So when he comes for divine assignment, he comes with his resources. start. The only start you need is Jehovah. Man of God, I start. Start here with Jehovah. You don't have the money. But God has men with the money. He knows where they are. He knows where their hearts are. He knows how to turn their hearts towards you. Stop telling me about what you don't have. You have God. God. God will make someone phone you and say, I want to meet you on Monday with capital. God. God. Stop calling people and harassing them. Connect with God. Your best partner in life. God. When King Saul, Hayata, the prophet was talking to him, King Saul, and said, you're going to be a king. I'm going to anoint you to be king. He says, man of God, let me remind you, I'm from the smallest tribe. But he didn't understand that I will anoint you. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. You will be turned into another man. And not a man from the smallest tribe. But now you are connecting to the tribe of the Lion of Judah. Don't tell me your background. When God has an assignment, your background is irrelevant. No man can do these things. Except God be with them. One of my sons said, said, Dad, someone called me. He said, I'm so excited. God called me. I mean, a, a man called me from overseas, I think from Germany. He says, I want to invest $10 million into your business. Listen to my response. I said, no. I said, no. He asked, why? He said, I thought this was my breakthrough. I said, no. And an unbeliever from Germany has, has been following you on LinkedIn for the past four years. What makes them look at you, a black boy with nothing and want to invest 10 million? They are seeing what you are not seeing about yourself. They don't know you. It means that if they want to invest 10 million, you are worth a billion. Yeah. And God has already shown you that you are worth a billion. But because of hunger, no transport money, no fuel money, no airtime, you can sell your birthright. for. Can you imagine if your birthright is worth 10 million? What is your birthright worth? He said, thank you, dad. I need you in my life. I thought it was a breakthrough. I said, it's a trap. Not every investment is a breakthrough. Ask yourself, why do they want to invest that in me? I said, tell them to write a proposal about why they want to invest in your business. Bring it to me. It will teach you about you. The enemy can blind you to what's coming. So you take change. When God comes on your business, the world will invest There's something, and I said to him, listen, if those people give you the 10 million, right? The 10 million is not all yours. 
Some of it will be for infrastructure. Some of it will be set up the business. Some of it will be capital. Hello? Probably from that 10 million, all you get is a million. What can you do with a million? Buy a nice house, two cars. Maybe have 50,000 in your safe. That's it. Then you are now a worker for Laban. And then I said, you keep telling me you want to build the church single-handedly. He said, yes. I said, will Laban allow you to build God's church? He said, no. He said, I've never seen that. To forgo your tomorrow for the sake of today. My tomorrow is always bigger than my today. Are you hearing wisdom from on high? While we look not at the rent we can see. <laughs> but we see the commercial buildings we cannot see. For the rent issue we see is temporal. Temporal means subject to change. The Holy Ghost will help you see the bigger picture. Many people will only talk about the scandal for two or three days. But Jesus, they will talk about long after you are gone. The God agenda is always bigger than the temporal scandal. Let people scandalize you, but you are still in the will of God. You are still doing things for God. Take bullets for God. Let them call you a Satanist for God. They call Jesus a Satanist for God. Yes. They said this man cast out de devils by the power of Beelzebub. Let them say that but remain on kingdom assignment. Mary did not refuse to birth Jesus because of the scandal. No. She said, it's okay. Be it unto me. She had factored in all the things people would say, but still said, be it unto me. Are you willing to be talked about because you are doing God's work? Are you willing for people to mock you that you go to prayer shift every other day because you are doing it for God? People call us crazy. We gave up business. And took up ministry. We're not talking about business. Look over booty things. We're talking about a multi-million dollar business that we gave up because he said, "Hell, hell, Rodney and Farai, you've been highly favored of the Lord. I want to use you to cast out devils. Uh huh? Uh huh? You have been making." Or you've been rebuilding cars. I want you to rebuild destinies. How shall this thing be? Since I did not go to Bible school. The Holy Ghost! <laughs> the Holy Ghost! Shall come upon you. And overshadow you. For every Hail Mary. There's the Holy Ghost. He calls it favor. It won't look like favor at the beginning. I mean, when I look at some people, it looks like work. Favor will not always look like favor. Who needed a baby? God. So God started the conversation. This Fast forward. There's a woman who was married. And they were married by two. Penina. Hannah. Penina had child after child after child after child. Hannah had no child. It ended up affecting a relationship with her husband. Obviously the relatives are Kuchizira. Zuguris. No child. So she wanted a child. So she went to God. 
changed her prayer because initially she wanted a child for competition to prove that she's a woman. Anytime you go to God and want things to prove that you can do it, you won't get his attention. How did she get his attention? Lord, if you give me a child, that's what I want, I will give him to you. In other words, give me what I want, but I will hand it over to you for the kingdom. She started the conversation and said, if you give me a child, Lord, in your kingdom, you need a prophet. So either way, her desire and the kingdom assignment, when they aligned, baby Samuel was born. In Mary's case, God wanted a baby. So God started the conversation. In Hannah's situation, Hannah wanted the baby. She started the conversation and said, if you give me the child, I will make him for the kingdom. So it can be God's assignment given to you or your assignment turned into a kingdom assignment. Uh, it's no longer going to be a baby. It's going to be a prophet. Ayata. In other words, I'm now attaching kingdom assignment to my will. It's not just my will. It's now the will of God. God, I wanted a child for myself, but I realized you needed a prophet for yourself. So I'm going to turn my baby into a prophet. If you just give me the child, I will make him a prophet. I will push him to church. I will teach him the ways of Jehovah. I will turn him into a kingdom asset. I will turn my asset into your asset. If you give me a business, I will turn it into a brick making machine business for the kingdom. If you give me money, I will turn it into kingdom money. If you give me a car, I will turn it into an evangelism tool if you give me a house my house shall be a house of prayer i've been praying for a house instead of praying for a house of prayer that's how you get god to partner with you you turn what you want into what he wants find a kingdom need that lines up with what you are praying for a kingdom needed a prophet you need a baby lord give me a baby you have found a prophet you have found a prophet you need a house to host your glory in my neighborhood in Mount Pleasant give me a house in Mount Pleasant I'll raise up a banner for you. Jehovah, I am available. I need a house to stay in. And you need a house to host your glory. I will build a house. A house of prayer. Strive, Masiwa. Needed a network. God. Needed a godful, a, a, a gospel preaching platform online if you give me a network the gospel will be preached from your network I wonder is there any way where what you want is lined up with what he wants you have not because you ask a miss James 4 3 that you may spend it on you if you take what you want uh, into what he wants the kingdom needs what you want. Volunteer what you want for the kingdom. And the kingdom will make sure you get it. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a teacher. Uh -huh. He's still waiting for the kingdom. But I want to be a teacher. I want to teach at a private school. He's still waiting for kingdom. I want to be a teacher so that I make money for my children. Your children are not kingdom. He's still waiting for a kingdom agenda. I want to be a teacher at, Co at, at, at Coventry. Convent. He's too. <laughs> because it's in town. <laughs> He's still waiting to hear the kingdom agenda. Lord, I want to be a teacher at Convent because I want to influence little girls for God. I want to teach them what you taught me. 
I want to warn them about what you warn me about. Then he says, he says, keep speaking. I want to win the souls of little girls because I realize that the devil is taking souls at a young age. Does that not sound better than give me a job at convent because they're paying dollars I want to build my house? Where is what you want coinciding with what he needs? Are you wanting what he does not need? God is a businessman. Lord, give me more money. I was studying with David this morning and I said to him, the Lord is asking a question. Listen to the question. In fact, questions. Uno idi mariacho. Uno mudi murumuacho. Surely should God give you a husband so you can have sex? Okay, to that one. Uno mudi. As long as Hannah failed to answer that question the kingdom way, God had no obligation to give her the baby. But when she answered the question, you could do no mudi wana by saying, Imimu no mudi prophet. When she made the agenda about God, God was interested. And it came to pass. By that time, the next year, ah, the child was born because a prophet was born. Don't just ask for a child. Ask for a prophet. <laughs> ask for an evangelist. Ask for a teacher of the word. Ask for a kingdom financer. Lord, give me a child who left businesses. Kutandi chengete. You still listening? Kutindisa so shaya. Kutindisa so sekwa. Penina. Now talking about God should give you a whole child because of penina. God will not give you a child to silence your competition. Oh God help us. God will not give you something just to silence your competitors. God will not give you things so you can prove a point. How many things are you praying for just so that you can prove a point? Give me a Rolls Royce. I want to show them. He says, I'm not hearing any God agenda in that. I'm just going to talk about it. Here's a, here's a popular one. Lord, deliver me from demons. Okay. You've been living with the demons, so. Clearly, they're not killing you, so. It's not urgent. It's not urgent for God to help you. Because you're praying wrong. Thus says the Lord, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me, that they may serve me, not because it's been too long. Your freedom is not based on the longevity of your bondage. Let my people go that they may serve me. Not so that they can say I'm free. Your freedom is not helping God. Attach your freedom to kingdom service. How long was legion bound? With 6,000 devils. 6,000 matrimony. Legion is 300 horsemen, 300 footmen. 6,000 plus devils holding one man and God left it like that. God left. God, why is the spirit husband still there? 
Why has God left it like that? KG, God said to me, I will not free you because I can. <laughs> I will not prosper you because I can. No, that's not how it works. God doesn't free you just to show you his abilities. God is not insecure about his abilities. God doesn't need to show you who he is. He is still God even if he doesn't show you. He said, I will not give you a house because I can. I'll give you a house because you want to turn it into a house of prayer. As for me and my house, we will save the Lord. Lord, we are saving you. We need the house to save you in. You have a house? All your neighbors don't know God? Your neighbors don't know God. Why should he give you one you own? If you cannot evangelize while you are renting, why should he give you one to own? So that what? So that you have a title deed to put in a briefcase. So that what? Why should God bless you? Because he can? Because you need? Or because it's been long? Do you know as long as you have a problem, someone has had them longer. So if it was about time or longevity of bondage, you would not be next. For deliverance. God saw legion living in tombs and left it like that. Why? Is he not a God of love? He left it like that because legion had no kingdom service agenda. That's why immediately when Jesus freed him, he said, go to ten cities. He wasn't free so that he could go to the park or the beach or the mall. He was freed so he could free others. Peter, Peter, the devil has sought to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith would not fail you. It doesn't end there. Find the scriptures in my notes. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. I've helped you so you help others. You are in here sitting here helping no one. It's a danger. You are contemplating what to do about souls. You are still thinking about what? When you are converted, when you are strengthened, look at it, it's right there. I have prayed for you that your faith would not fail you. When you are converted, kingdom assignment, strengthen your brethren. Let me ask this week, who have you strengthened? Monday to Sunday, who have you strengthened? I was here ministering the other day. The Lord said, call one of, one, one of his sons. Muzenda there. He said, take $50, give it to him. I gave it to him. He had no food. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Who have you strengthened? This is the problem in the kingdom. So much selfishness. Lord bless me so that they can call me blessed. Uh -huh. So bad three. Uh -huh. Are you the first to have a wedding? Can you imagine? God does even has no obligation to break a curse on you until you volunteer for kingdom service. So the reason why you keep recycling demons is because you keep recycling non-kingdom service. As men of God, Dinama Trenda Tambura. Okay? If we look at 8 billion people on the earth, 6 billion are suffering. Do you know what God is saying to many of your prayers? So, Heal me. So? So that what? 
because, because I'm a healer? No, if God healed because he's a healer, the whole earth, earth would be healed. If God prospered because he's a provider, there will be no lack on planet Earth.